everyone, George Lee Cakes here, and we are back again with my implementation of an animatronic VR game. In the last episode, we had just uh, kind of done a test, brought the assets into Unity, and did some basic lighting in the scene to see how things actually look with some reflection probes and so forth, just to kind of see what the atmosphere is like and if these textures are actually working. Now what we're going to do is hopefully uh, finish off the floor and the ceiling, and uh, that'll be it for this room, except for the mirror, I think, is it, and then the door as well. So let's at least get these these two elements done. So I'm first going to go and control H and hide the ceiling. I'm going to look at the floor. We're going to come at this from a top view, because I'm going to use the grid to go ahead and lay down the next part of this. We're going to go to create. We're going to want to make sure that we've set things to, let's see, polygon primitives and interactive creation. We're then going to create our plane. I'm going to start up here and... And actually, can I, it does not let me do that, does it? Okay, because I want to make this, let's see, what is this? I don't know how many units this is, but it's what? That would be so great if I could do it that way. So what is this? This is one, two, three, four. Okay, so that should be a perfect square. And just to make sure, we're going to go to planar, do a y-axis one on this, hit apply. And it looks like everything fits out right. And I did make sure that when I did that, it does keep image width and height ratio. Okay, so now we've got our floor that we can work with. And we're going to take this and, of course, cut it up and move it over to the other side. So there's the full floor. We're going to go ahead and delete that really fast. Take this piece of floor, duplicate it, move it on over, grid snap, and put it somewhere right around there. Then we're going to go ahead and put in a multi-cut. And we'll do that, uh, I don't know, there maybe. Grab this edge, and then if we make sure that when we move this edge, we have preserve UVs on. As we do this, it'll preserve the UVs over here, so that when I make my cut right there, delete it, I will now have the UVs lining up properly across these two pieces, and I don't have to worry about anything. So let's go ahead now and rename these to floor. So let's actually open up our naming stuff and go to rename and say uh, men's bathroom floor underscore and then enter and there's one well there's we'll do zero one and zero two it's a little bit better i think we can grab both of them stick them under bathroom mail for now open that up and that should be it for that all we have to do now is associate it with a texture now do we already have one so we can go to assign existing materials and do we have like men's bathroom we have wall and sink and then it doesn't look like we have a men's bathroom floor. So let's go ahead and create that material. Grab both, right click, assign new material, Fong, and do, 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 do. Edit, delete by type, history on these objects, Fong 24, uh, men's bathroom floor, underscore M, enter, save. And that should now be on both of those objects. We are now gonna take both of these, duplicate them, snap them up to the top ceiling, and now we can take both of these elements and go to Mesh Display, Reverse, and make those our ceiling. Now let's go ahead and rename them. Ceiling and Ceiling. And let's rename this 2 and 1. Although, uh, now I think about it, let's see, is that, that's 1, and that's 2, and that's 1, and that's 2. Okay, that's fine. That'll work for us. So now we've got our two bits there. Uh, we're going to set the materials up inside of Unity, although we don't have one yet for the ceiling over here. And I think I'm going to want to cut this up and actually dedicate different spots to lights that are going to be in the scene. So let's go ahead and do a, let's see, come at this from the top. Uh, you know what? Let's, um, let's first get rid of our floor so that doesn't get in our way. And come back over here. Let's go to shading. And what do I have on? Do I have back face coming on? No, I don't, which I guess is good. Let's cut this up starting here and moving over. Or actually, we should probably use the multi-cut tool. We'll do subdivisions. And actually, we don't want subdivisions going that way. We want the, we can use the connect tool if we want to. So we can go grab those two edges there. Go to connect. And we can see how many we want. So there's one. So we can do two. How, what do I want to do? Three. Three. One, two, three, four, five, six. I wish this was an even number. That might that would make a lot more sense. So that's three. And I'm trying to think if that's going to end up cutting up. See, it's not cutting up evenly. So what happens if I do four? I'm trying to see if they get on the grid. If they're not going to get on the grid, then I think I'm just going to manually do this and we'll put them on the grid. So let's go into multi-cut tool. We'll do a cut from one end to the other end. 
like that. And of course, go to our vertices, snap them properly in place, and hopefully our UVs are coming along for the ride just to make our life easier. Although our UVs are probably going to end up getting messed up now uh, for the ceiling. So I'm not going to care about that too much. So that's one segment and that's two segments. I almost feel like that's probably what I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna make another cut here and just line that up on the grid right there. And this is probably gonna be all tile here and then this is going to be, uh, well, actually, you know what? This is, this isn't quite right. So what is this? So this is one, two, three, this is one unit plus one, two, three, four units going that way. So if I were to do the same thing over here, would it work out? So that's two units. No, it wouldn't work out. So what is this going to look like if I were to cut into this from this direction? That's a big light that I would end up having right there. So that's not quite right. So let's, let's nuke these and not care. We're going to do insert edge loop tool. We're going to do three edge loops like that. And then we're going to do, uh, should we do two edge loops going this way? That looks pretty good. The idea being that maybe this one and this one will actually be lights that are going to be in the ceiling. So we're going to grab all these elements and we're going to do a bevel and we're going to make that a lot lower. Maybe not quite that low. So that's, we're going to do uh, seven five maybe, no, zero seven five. That's getting closer. Let's just try Zero, 05, enter. I think I like that. So now that we've done that, uh, each of these are going to be uh, tiles that extend outwards. And let's do an extrude face on each of these. And I wanna just pull this down a little bit like that. So actually, you know what? That's the exact opposite of what I really wanna do, isn't it? So really it should be more like this. And then a few of these are going to be lights. And I'm guessing it's going to be maybe these two right here. All right, so we've, let's see, does this have an extra face now exposed? It looks like I have it doubled up. Hold on a second. Let's grab all of these faces and move them up like that. And you are not working because I have on preserve UVs. So let's do that now. So actually, we're gonna keep that off for the moment. We're gonna come back and deal with that soon enough. And we didn't do the bevel on this side, which is gonna come back and bite us because I'm gonna to have to end up cutting here, duplicating this over, but that's fine for now. Now I, I wanna consider the lights themselves. So the, these are tiles. This is the plastic strip that goes in between them or steel strip that's coated with a paint. And then we've got a light here. I'm gonna say a light here that we can do. And I'm trying to put enough light that the stalls are gonna get influenced as well as everything else in the room. And now let's take a quick look at uh, uh, ceiling, lights, bathroom, usually fluorescent I think would be the rest, right way to put this, but let's take a look here. Restaurant, bathroom. Can we look at, can we get that specific? See, these are nice looking lights. We're not gonna have anything like this. I guess you'd call them fluorescent. Fluorescent or, yeah, fluorescent. And once again, we're looking at examples of what things look like. How about office? Just office. Okay, so yeah, the, this is more what I'm thinking of is one of these guys right here. So that's uh, gonna be a couple extrusions, looks like. So we're gonna input that in, import that in. I wanna do G and pull that out a bit and then do G again, and then just pull that in ever so slightly. G key again, I'm just adding, you know, it might be a little unnecessary in terms of detail. I'm just gonna add a little something here. Now these did not, um, these are not uniform, so you'll notice that parts of these pulled out more than others. So we're gonna have to go in now and grab the faces for these pieces here and here. Let me see, that's, that's okay, I'm not so big are concerned about that. But this one and this one do need to be grabbed and then I need to scale them in to flatten them out a bit, something like that. Okay, so now I've got my, what will become my fluorescent lighting in there. And I'm thinking that, you know, this is a diffuser, so I don't need to really worry too much about it. If we wanted to, we could come in here and try to bevel these 
Um, I'm not going to go too crazy here. One should be good enough, like that maybe. And I think I think that's good enough. So now let's take this other side, delete that off, take this one, and I'm going to duplicate from here over, I think. I do need to extend this to grab this entire range over here. So we're going to go to right click, uh, control right click, grow selection, grow, and grow again. Now it did get some extra stuff here that we don't want. And let's just take a look at what we have now. So I think that should be everything that we need. We can now take this and duplicate faces. We can separate these duplicated faces, hit apply, and then we don't want to do that. We want to grab it. So come on. And we did get some extra stuff. We can get rid of that in just a moment. Let's just move this off to the side, go here, grab this stuff and delete that off. And I think now we should be all right. So all we need to do is grab it, W, D, snap it to the side, grab this now and snap it over there. Let's see if we can't make this easy on us by coming in and around from the other side. And then if I, let's see, I want a vertex snap to, I think, right there. So let's see what we have on this side. So we've got, looks like we got some doubling up of polygons that we're going to have to get rid of, I think. If we go to face mode, yes, we've got this here. If we go to face mode over here, we got the same thing twice. So we are going to get rid of this. Actually, can I make this an edge loop? It's the easiest way for me to make this selection really fast. Let's turn off back face culling so I can see what I'm dealing with. I'm going to move this back off to this. Whoops, too much. Move that off to the side. And then it's this inner edge, I think, that we need to get out of the here, right? Oh, let's, wait a second. So that's, well, that's a problem. Okay. So yeah, that is actually an issue. So this side did not have the same thing happen. So what we're going to do just to make sure that we're, we're good to go is I'm going to need to delete. Oh, this is, oh, I, I screwed up a little bit here, guys. Um, I screwed up with the extrusions on this. So what I think I want to do really quick is nuke it after all, nuke that, come in here again, and I'm going to do an interactive plane. But with this one, I'm actually just going to make it, you know what, I'm just going to do this. We're not going to play around anymore. Uh, I don't think I need to worry about edges and seams and whatnot like I was worried about it with the floor, because this is going to end up becoming an interactive element. Let's just do this. No, uh, you know what? Just try to think about how I want to handle this. Okay, so there's that. Now that's that bottom piece. Now that needs to go out a unit. Two units. Now I hit apply and there we go. Now we have a perfect square. One, two units short on that side, which means we're two units short on this side now. And I know I'm, there's probably a better way of doing this, but whatever. Apply, that's still a square, we're good. Okay, now I'm gonna take the multi-cut tool, do a cut here, here, and here. And we're just going to put that there this down there, put this up here as our border, and from there we can grab this whole thing now and we can cut it up. So let's just cut it into sections here. So we've got one, two, three. Grab each of these, move them in place, and I'm not going to worry too much about the proportions after all. Um, that's something that can be handled later on. So we're going to do a cut of two going this way. Okay. And now that we have that, so we got one, two, three, four. We're going to run into the same problem that I ran into just a few minutes ago. So I want to have an odd number. So I'm going to grab this edge now, or this edge. 
and we are going to If I grab all of you, except for, if we grab all of you and do a bevel and do something like that, it's still not doing that on the far edges. And this one is getting a different size than the rest of them for some reason, which is kind of annoying. So what if we did it here and then we did a bevel? So I'm thinking that's just a distortion. If I do this, that shows up and everything is pretty, pretty sound. So then I can grab these two and I do have these bevel edges on the sides now to protect me from anything going really wrong. Okay, so now I know I can do that. I'm gonna step back just a little bit. We're gonna redo this bevel, but it's gonna be uh, 0 0.05 and apply. And you know what, that's a bit, too thin, so we'll do eight, apply. And I think I can go with that. Once again, we'll just flip everything, I uh, will uh, we'll do it right now. Mesh display, um, ah, you know what, we'll just leave it as it is. I'll work on it on the floor, it's just easier that way, instead of turning everything upside down. So now that we've got this, I can do the lighting for this one and this one, and we can do an extrude, uh, no. We are going to grab, what do we want to do? Let's grab all this. I'm trying to think if I want to do it this way or a different way. But anyway, now we can go Control Shift I to inverse our selection. We can do an extrude face and I can extrude these down ever so slightly. Now we don't need these end pieces. Those are just gonna mess with us, I think. So I'm thinking about nuking them. Because if we wanna combine this with another set, we won't need those end pieces either. Not exactly sure yet. We'll find out. Okay, so that's all of them. I'm gonna hit delete. Now we're just left with this. Now my pure elements are this one and this one. This entire segment here is impure because it doesn't have an edge over here to cut it off. But this one represents exactly how I kind of want to do things for this. So really I can probably grab all of this, right click grow selection, grow, and let me just see what happened. No, that's not good. Let's see here. Can I get rid of some of this crap, please? Control H. Control H, Control H. All right, so now we're left with that. And all I should really want is we cut that off. Then I should be good to go from there. Okay, so now is our lights. Now are our lights. So let's grab these, right click, extrude in. I'm gonna grab these and just kind of pull them in a little bit. And I am gonna watch this time and try to fix this as it's happening. Something like that. And then hit the G key. I wanna sync it in, recess it. And that'll be the lighting piece. And this is different than the other one where I made it come out. This one I'm recessing it inwards. And I'm actually, I'm not gonna recess it that much. So maybe something like that. And if we wanted to, we could bevel this. I'm not exactly sure why I would at this time, but if you look anywhere, it's probably gonna be on the recesses of the lights. So we might as well Give it a little bit of detail. Might be something that we could have done on the normal map instead, but uh, it's fine for right now. All right, so now that we've done that, we should be able to duplicate this entire layer, move it over here, and then if we flip this thing, uh, so let's go to across the x-axis, and we can do that as a negative one, and then we can go to modify, freeze transforms, and then we're just gonna do scale. So that should flip that scale back. And now we can fuse the two of these together by cutting off these pieces right here. And there won't be any doubled up geometry at that point. I think that's it, All right? 
or do I need to, I need to nuke this entire piece right here. So this all the way down needs to go and this as well. Okay, now if we go to F8 mode for object, D key, move that over there, then grab this and then plug that in there, these two should now marry up just fine. Okay, and that goes all the way to the other side. The problem though is that now I now have two light sources right next to each other, which is not what I want to have happen. Uh, it just, it's not usually how you lay stuff out. What I should do is probably come in here and cut out all of this right there. And then take this entire section here, rip that out, stick that next to the other one, and then take this piece and stick it on the other side. So each now, now each of these are actually becoming like pan independent panels uh, from one another. And in that case, I mean, it might even be a smart idea to literally slice each one of these down here and make them modular panels that I can, you know, reuse over and over again. So the easiest way to do that would actually be probably to come in here, make my cuts down the centers of each of these, and then nuke off the rest of it. And I know I'm going back and forth on how I'm handling this stuff. Oh my God, Maya crashed. Thank you, Maya. Basically, I am just trying to come up with a modular way to handle this and keeping things somewhat in proportion with the actual room as it is right now. And that's kind of the, the fight that I'm, I'm dealing with at the moment. So I like this little modular quadrant here. I can reuse that over and over again, or I can reuse this modular quadrant over and over again. Uh, either one's fine. The only difficulty is that if I tried to use this, I would end up with a double gap between everything. So really, this is probably the best little bit to work with. So let's go ahead and grow our selection and see if we don't grow out to where we need to. And we're not quite there. So we're gonna grow out to here and here and here. And I think that's okay, but you are not. So now we can take this, right click and Extract faces, hit apply, close. And all that's happening right now is I'm gonna hit delete. And now I've got my one element that I'm gonna use over and over and over again uh, in this scene. So let's go ahead, right click, assign new material, fong, and uh, bathroom ceiling, something like that. Edit, delete by type history. Men's bathroom ceiling element underscore zero one. Oh wait, that's the material. Let's do underscore M, enter, save, copy that name, and also do something like that. Zero one, enter, save. Okay, now that we have this set up, why don't we go ahead and unwrap it. So UVs, planar, unwrap, Y axis, close. And we get that, and we're gonna to want to rip this apart a bit. So we can tear out this face, right here, that's gonna be a separate element. We can tear out all of the um, these ones and make them separate faces that can be organized however. And now what we're left with are all the other pieces. So if we go to UV shell, unfold this, it'll kind of come out nasty. We can use this now to slice it up. So I can slice here and here and here and here, here and here here and here, here and here. Actually, that centerpiece, I don't have a seam going down. Not sure if I want to yet. We'll find out, I'm sure. And uh, let's see here. Do I want... I can make it going down this way and cut them off. One or two of these are gonna be longer than the others is what's gonna happen here, but I don't think I don't think it's gonna matter that much. So let's go ahead and make these cuts here. Go ahead and go to cut. Now we've got this separate UV shell, uh, but it's a bit long. So we can come in here now, cut this here. Now we've got those two separate elements, unfold them again, orient them, and that's fine. So we've got those pieces, which aren't terribly long. We can come in here now, and the plastic pieces as well can be cut along these edges right here. Um, and that is on the inside of 
this piece here. So really we could have, we could have combined like this to be one element and that might be a smarter move. So let's go ahead and do that really fast. So there's that, unfold that, and that should just unfold naturally. There shouldn't be any, any reason for anything crazy. And we can take that out and then we can orient that. And now we'll do the same thing on the other side. Whoops, come on, face please, face, face, and face, apply, unfold, UV shell, orient, oh, you're gonna orient, there we go. So those are done. Now that we've got those finished, we should be able to run over here to these other ones and do the exact same process. So we've got these little tiny bits here, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, that's that stuff right there. So it shouldn't matter. I should be able to just grab you. Um, let's grab all of you and see how far that goes down. So that goes to there, and I can grab these two elements here, and I can include these two elements on this one if I want to as well. And then we can do an apply, and then a unfold, and... Uh, UV shell and orient. Move that over there. We're gonna do the same thing for this top piece, I think. Or these side pieces, really. Let's frame on up, see what we're going for. So we've got that. So both of these I think I can grab, but we can go ahead and do create UV shell. And then we can do a, a unfold, unfold, and then an orient and move them off over here as well. And let's go ahead and do the same thing on this side. So we're gonna grab you, and we're gonna grab you. Do I grab the little tabs on the ends? No, I don't. Let's go ahead and create UV shell. And let's unfold and orient. Move them up with their brothers, sisters. And now for you and you, which are really just, I mean, we're gonna unfold and we're going to orient again. And just move them up with the other pieces. And the last bit is this one right here. And this is probably just going to be me grabbing this entire thing right here and here and up here, and ripping that out and then breaking them into their own individual pieces. So right clicking, go to edge mode, double click there, double click double click, double click, and cut. Now I have four pieces, and then we can just unfold and orient each one. They're good up there. Now I do have these little stragglers here, and that's, I'm wondering what they are, so I'm gonna face, I'm gonna snap, F, and it looks like that's gonna come along for one piece, and is this another piece? I'm guessing it's on the opposite side. Yes, and that I did not, set up properly. So I'm gonna to need to worry about that in a moment. So let's do you and you and you. So that's all that. See that little piece right there should be a part of this longer one right here, is my thought. So I'm gonna grab both of them, do this again, unfold, and then now orient. And that one's gone. And I wanna do the same thing on the other side. Frame up, grab you, Apply, unfold, orient, and there we are. Not terribly complicated, just continually going back and forth and uh, refining my UVs, making them what I want them to could be at the end of the, of the day. I'm gonna take both of these, snap that off there, uh, create UV shell, grab all three, unfold, and we'll do an orient on them. And now that I've got everyone split up, we can go ahead and lay it out. So I'm gonna grab everything, unfold, and you know what, before I actually do that, one thing I am gonna do is just save this, edit, delete by type, history, modify, freeze transform, freeze it just in case. Now that I know I'm good, we can go into UV shells, layout, layout UVW, 2048, three packing iterations, uh, preserve, ro rotation preser preservation off, for, for sure, uh, preserve 3D ratio is fine, rotate is good, six pixel packing, yes. And apply and let's see what happens. All right, and you know, not terrible. Things are packed up okay. 
I suppose. Uh, there's our light, there's the other elements, and there's the other ones over there. Um, we could go in here and move things around if we wanted to, but I'm pretty confident in Substance Painter. We're not going to have any any real issues. Mit map, mit maps might become an issue with some blending here and there, but yeah, I'm, I'm not too dissatisfied with that. I think it's all right. Okay, so now we've got a ceiling tiling element that we can reuse over and over again. And we can go over here now and actually delete the old one. And let's go to display show all really fast. And let's nuke the old ceiling tile element. And let's um, modify center of the pivot on it, WD. And we're gonna wanna snap this. I'm gonna move this off. Whoops, let's see, WD. I'm gonna snap this to, I guess, D. Snap, V, vertex snap, to right there. And we are going to, do we have a, does this have a, t a material on it? Let's right click, add existing material. And what was it, like male bathroom, men's bathroom ceiling element M, yes. We can control D that, move this over here, and it should snap, I think. Does it? Yes, it does. It seems like it's fine. Shift D that, and then we can grab these other elements, Shift D them as well, and move them off over here. I'm gonna reassign their pivot point. W, D, and V them over here, and then snap them to there. And with that, now that's not correct. See that? So we need to be just a tad bit further over. That's correct. Now we've got this. All we gotta do when we're done with this is nuke off the pieces that we don't want to be part of this anymore, make a cut across it, and it's still gonna be sampling the same texture, it's just gonna be a custom piece of geometry for that region. And that's gonna be, what, somewhere like, let's do wireframe on shading. That's gonna be a cut that's gonna be somewhere like centrally down this, this area right here. So I might as well go ahead and we can go ahead and put a multi-cut in here. I'm just gonna do that somewhere like there. And then I can duplicate that, that segment and reuse that one over and over again. So we can take this, come here, delete all this off, and then reuse this DV down here, delete these two pieces, and control D, vertex snap to there, and then we can do a whoops. I'm not sure if I like that. Hold on a second. This is not correct. This one's doubled up. So this is also wrong. So we need to move this down a bit. What is, is there, it's already one there. Okay, there we are. So we're gonna go DV right there, vertex snap that to there. Still cut acceptably, it looks like, for the most part. So we can go ahead and now actually, when I made that cut, is that, I guess that's okay, W, see, hold on, see this? See how this one side is longer than the other side? Now that's not a big deal, but it is a deal to me. So why, so you're telling me that this piece did not get cut in half, is what I'm, it was what I'm gathering from this. So this one did, but this one didn't. So now you got a gap of, of uh, half of a gap on the other side. So in reality, this thing on this side should have been like this. And this should have been cut off here, here, and here. And that's the correct proportions for this, this element, which means that you die, you die, you die, and this is our gold standard. However, it's not perfect anymore, so now we're gonna to have to go in here and do another layout and hit apply. All right. Like, I, really not a whole lot of change, but I just wanted to make sure that, you know, we optimized it and used as much of the space as possible. So all I really need to do now is we're going to snap this up here. So WDV over there. I'm going to take this now and vertex snap it. Whoops. I don't know why you are not listening to me today, Maya. Let's move this over to here now. And we're going to move this now DV to there, control D this. In a perfect world, I would have control D that, but W, DV, snap there. Control D, 
X snap this over to the side and it looks like we're still on the grid, which is great. Shift D that again. And it looks like we are perfect. So now things are working out for us. So let's go ahead now and control D this and X this over to there. And that lines up well is, is Maya, Maya, what are you doing to me? I just hope that's saved. I don't know. I don't know if, if they, they moved a hotkey or something, but I just keep closing this application. Okay, so then we've got this now, and all I'm gonna have to do is make that slice, and it's probably gonna be a slice like this, to make my life easy, is I'm gonna take this, and actually, I'm gonna have to, actually, I'm gonna have to do this a little bit differently. We're gonna have to delete these panels here so we don't have the light. So we're gonna need one of these that's also just panel, I think, and then I will, yeah. We're going to get to that in just a second. We're probably going to want to... Huh. Let's delete these ones off. Whoops, not this one. So now all I need to do is grab this element, and we're going to grow this selection out until we fill up that whole panel like that. Now I should be able to delete that, take this panel element, and stick it on there. So we can do a... Duplicate face, um, W, WDV, the U there, U to there, combine these two elements together, and go to vertex, grab them, merge verts, merge verts, hit apply, close. Now that's one solid element. Now we are going to have to redistribute the um, UVs again on this one, but if I was smart... Uh, couple ways I could do this. I could try to reuse the same material over and over again, but it might just be easier to have two separate materials. So these ones use the material called men's bathroom ceiling element. Yes. So I'm going to create a new material for these ones actually. So let's grab this name and we'll grab all three, right click, assign new material, fong, paste that here, except now it's men's ceiling uh, with light. Enter. Okay. And this one is going to have just the normal element one on it instead. And we are going to grab its UVs, not unfold, lay out UVW, and apply. Okay. So here we go. We get something very similar to before, which is fine. Now that we've got that set up, I can take this and we can place our pivot WDV down there. Control D this, exit over there, shift D again, and now we have it covering our entire ceiling. Uh, okay, that's, there's, I think one of my buttons has to be sticking, and it's causing me to hit, what is close in Maya? Control Q. I am nowhere near Q. Is there a save in close? I don't see it, so I do not know why after saving it is causing everything to fall apart, but I'll be on the lookout for that. So what we'll be doing in the next video is taking out the ceiling, these two ceiling elements into Substance Painter as separate objects with their own ambient occlusion bake separate from everything else, setting them up with the proper materials, exporting out those two materials, and then bringing everything into Unity, including the floor, which is just going to be using a tileable texture. It's not going to have any kind of split ups like this one. Um, we already made that in a previous video. And that should be it for um, setting up the floor and the ceiling on this, on this, uh, in this scene. Thanks, everyone. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I will see you all next time. And before I lose all my work, I'm going to save this out as a new scene. I don't know why it's not going to new layout, but let's save that right there. And yeah, I'll see you next time. So long and goodbye. Mm -hmm.